Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. If you've been watching this channel for a while, and if you haven't, you should. You should subscribe and like. But if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that one of the tools I really like to use in remote teaching is the Microsoft Whiteboard. I've done a lot of videos with tips and tricks. I've even shown you how to create a whiteboard template that you can then use as a starting point for any discussions you have. And I've shown you how to use things like uh, Office Lens to take a picture of an actual real world whiteboard and convert that into an image. All of those things aside, the Microsoft whiteboard does have a couple of things that it doesn't do that I wish it did. And in this video, I'm going to talk about those things. Here I am in the whiteboard app and a few things. If I create a new whiteboard, so I'll just create a new whiteboard and we'll just make it simple. I'll just put a scribble on there and I can go back. Now you'll notice that right now it shows me that this was edited tonight at 7.32 p.m. And if I go back and do some more work on it, actually I'll just go in there and do some more work on it. Grab a, another pen in there. Not a very exciting whiteboard, but I scribble on it and you can see that what will happen is it will uh, update it as to when I edited it over time. And you can see here that once it's sat there for a while, it'll have a date and a time of when I worked with the whiteboard. Now, if I go into the ellipse here, I can rename the whiteboard. So I'm going to call this one um, Aardvark Whiteboard. Right? So it starts with double A's and I'll say OK to that. And you'll see that it's here. And if I go to this one that says ideas and I hit the ellipse, I can also rename it and I'll call it Aardvark and we'll call it Aardvark 1. I'm just using Aardvark because it has two A's at the beginning. And if I go to this one here, maybe what I'll actually, you know what, I'll go back. Let me sc scroll back here. Let me call this one instead of Aardvark 1, I'll call it Aardvark 5. Okay, so we have Aardvark, we have Aardvark whiteboard and Aardvark 5, which is a numer numerical. And then I'll come in here and I'll call this Aardvark. And there, there's a reason for this, Aardvark 3. Okay, so now if I was to actually file these alphabetically, Aardvark 3 should come first, then Aardvark 5, and then Aardvark with the W for whiteboard. But notice it does not rearrange it even though I rename it. It keeps the order of when they were created. So all of the whiteboards I create are kept in the order that I created them. Now I'm just going to take this Aardvark 5 and this will come up to play a little bit later on. And I'm going to call this, uh, what is a cool thing? All one big word. So what is a cool thing? That's going to come into play in a few moments. Now you'll notice there's no menu bar on the white bar, uh, whiteboard. There's no way if I try to drag these, it will not allow me to drag them into new positions. So I am stuck with my whiteboards in the order that I create them. And you might say, well, where are they stored? Are they stored somewhere in OneDrive? Well, let me just pop into my OneDrive. So we'll just view this online. And so I pop into my OneDrive here and I'm going to search my OneDrive for that whiteboard. And if you look here, you'll see here that I've got what is a cool thing. So I'll go and search my OneDrive here for what is a cool thing. What is a cool thing? And when I search for it, and that's why I chose one big word, you see that I can't find any results. I'll search the entire organization for what is a cool thing. Nothing shows up. And what this is telling me is that this is being saved somewhere by Microsoft, but it is not being saved anywhere where I have access to it. And I do know that it is being saved online in the cloud because of the fact that one, it's associated with this account. And if I go to this account on another computer, all of my whiteboards are there. Plus I can share it online. The problem is I can't access them as whiteboard objects online. So that's a bit of a problem I consider with Microsoft Whiteboard, something that I would love to see them change. Now what I can do as a workaround, let's say for some reason that I want to grab this here, what is a cool thing whiteboard, I can go in and I can export it. And you can only export it in one format, and I'll just put this here on the desktop for now. I can only start it, uh, export it as a PNG. So I'll call this, what is a cool thing? 
And oh, that didn't work out too well for me. So let's try that again. What is a cool thing? And then what I'll do is I'm going to save that. And I've got it just saved onto my desktop here as an image file. And then what I can do is open up an app. Like, for example, I'll open up OneNote. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just keep any old whiteboard images on here so that I can at least have a copy of those whiteboards. And this is going to give me more ability to manipulate and to find them. And then if, for example, if I put a text image on here, or I can right click on here and I can do an alt text and I'll say my alt text is what is a cool thing. I can put a description, whiteboard created, oh for heaven's sakes, whiteboard created in my BI class November 2020. Let's say we did that and I can say done. And now that's an alt text. And if I, if I go on here and I, I look at this um, whiteboard here, if I do a search for this, it'll actually pick up on those characters that I put in there. So it'll pick up on what's a cool act. Um, so I can go in here, I can do a search on there in order to find it. So if we go in there, um, that's one way of kind of dealing with the whiteboards. It's not elegant. It's not ideal. I would love to be able to reorganize these and I would love to be able to put them in folders and revisit them. But Microsoft's philosophy, I suppose, and I can't speak to it specifically, but I suppose their philosophy is that this is a working tool that once you've finished with it, you can save it, but it's not really intended for you to uh, go back and revisit the whiteboard. You can, of course, go way back. So if I go way back here to a whiteboard that I've worked on, let's say I created a whiteboard way back here in uh, September, I can go back into that old whiteboard in the whiteboard app. It'll actually bring it back for me. I can scroll out here and uh, I can actually go in and make changes to this whiteboard. And if I make another change on here, a bunch of triangles and triangle mood. Okay, so I put a bunch of triangles into text and if I go back, um, you'll notice that I was able to go in and edit that. And if I go up here to the top, you'll notice that because I made those edits, it moved it into that position. So that becomes my first whiteboard, the last one I worked on. Now, to be fair, I do hope Microsoft one day gives us the ability to save our whiteboards into a specified location organize them into folders and really have a way of sorting through them once we create a lot of them. But to be fair, whiteboards in the classroom are a temporal event. It's something that we create as we're lecturing and as we're demonstrating concepts. And then at the end of those demonstrations, we often just erase the whiteboard or we'll take a picture of it if we want to revisit what we created in the future. And we can do exactly the same thing with the Microsoft whiteboard, the digital whiteboard. It would be nice to have the ability to put them into folders, to save them, to expand upon them in the future. And I do have the video on how to create a whiteboard template, which can be handy for you. Although it does involve scrolling and finding those templates in order to use them again. But Let's hope that Microsoft uh, looks at some of the feedback they've gotten and maybe adds that feature in, or we can use some of the things I've shown you in this video so that we can work around those and save our whiteboards in a more easily searchable and findable format. As always, thank you so much for watching. There's some more videos of mine that you can take a look at. And if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. Hit the like button because it really helps the channel grow. And uh, share this out with colleagues and share it out with friends if you think they can benefit from this information. Thanks again. See you in the next video.